Taibev, yes, the war in Ukraine has impacted uh, so much the French election. It has taken all the room uh, in the news for the past 42 days and uh, even more. And the candidates have made their campaign, but they haven't had the visibility they would have had uh, in normal times. For Emmanuel Macron, it's a bit different because you just said he is the incumbent president. So given his role, he has been under the spotlight uh, as the chief negotiator for uh, Europe. And uh, with uh, this position, he clearly left the other candidates uh, in his tracks. So we could say that Emmanuel Macron uh, has been a president because he needed to, and but uh, he's a candidate only when he can. So because of that, he hasn't had the opportunity to make uh, his uh, campaign, to make a proper campaign. But the question is, uh, does he really need to? That's not for sure. Yeah, that is interesting. And he has, of course, the, the war has actually allowed him to look very statesmanlike on the world stage. He's not particularly popular in France. Is that going to hurt his re-election chances? Yes and no. So you're totally right. Uh, on the international scene, Emmanuel Macron is seen as a world-class leader. But domestically, if you look a bit closer, in the past five years, Emmanuel Macron had to cope with COVID, you just said, the war in Ukraine, but also transport strikes, uh, the reform of pensions, the civil unrest with the yellow vest, and so many other stuff. So all those uh, polemic, if I may say, uh, are as many issues that has prevented him from doing his political program from 2017. But uh, having said that, Emmanuel Macron is quite very strong just with what he represents. What you have to understand is that in France, it's been almost 60 years that we have the same dual um, political landscape, which is uh, the traditional left and the traditional right, the conservatives uh, and the, um, the, the, the ones from the left, uh, the socialists, sorry. And Emmanuel Macron, at the last election in 2017, one year before this election, he decided to create his own party, La République en Marche. Uh, which we could translate with um, Republican the move. And he won the election. And ever since, the political landscape uh, has been totally modified because those traditional parties, left and right, conservative and socialist, uh, they have been gone. They, don't, uh, they do not attract the mass anymore. So Emmanuel Macron is still quite strong because now it's been five years, he is well established as the candidate from the centre and as a centrist. He is not in the middle of two traditional parties anymore, but he is in the middle of two extreme parties, the far right and the far left. So he still have a good chances to win this election. Yeah, he becomes the most appealing candidate. Now, the far right is probably where he gets his greatest threat. There was a charismatic newcomer, Eric Zamor. Has he made any inroads or is Marine Le Pen really his main opposition? So you're right, Bev. Eric Zemmour is a very charismatic man and I know him personally. And what you can say is that the man knows how to make an appearance. <laughs> but you have to understand that Eric Zemmour has no experience whatsoever in politics. He's a very well-known character in France because he has done all the TV show, radio show, he's, he's been in all the studios for the past 30 years, but he has never been a candidate and specifically not in a presidential election. So um, some people uh, have found that curious that he is not a candidate and I think Eric Zemmour was a bit of a curiosity when he said he will become a candidate and that's why the polls have shown at the beginning that he, he will be able to have maybe 15% person, uh, person of the votes. But no, this number have kept decreasing and decreasing again because the curiosity has passed and no, I reckon that some voters are telling themselves that for quite the same ideas, it would be more viable to vote for Marine Le Pen. And as you said, uh, the far right uh, is more and more important in France for the past, I'd say, 20 years with the Le Pen family. At first, we had the father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, and then we had the daughter, Marine Le Pen. And Marine Le Pen, two elections ago, so it's been 10 years, she was on the 
first round uh, already 18% of the vote. And then five years ago, she was 21% of the vote. And now this year, the far right will be 30% of the vote. But it's just because no, it's not Marine Le Pen on her own, but there are two main characters, Marine Le Pen and Eric Zemmour. Yeah. So, of course, they will eventually eliminate one another. What can we expect? Who do you think will be left standing after Sunday's runoff? What we can say probably for sure is that on Sunday we won't have a new president elected with the majority uh, in France. But uh, it's likely to say that Emmanuel Macron will arrive first. And the, uh, the polls show that Marine Le Pen should arrive uh, second. And we will be heading uh, in the same head-to-head -head that in uh, 2017. Now the question mark is, will the left unite behind one man? And will the left unite behind Jean-Luc Mélenchon with the far-left candidate? And if they do so, will that overturn uh, the polls? So it could be... Emmanuel Macron versus Marine Le Pen, but it also could be Emmanuel Macron versus Jean-Luc Mélenchon, even if it's a bit more uh, unlikely. And there's also uh, another question mark about sun on Sunday, it's the participation, because um, in France the vote is not compulsory, so there is a risk that this election um, will not uh, interest that much people, and the polls are showing that one in three uh, voters might not uh, show up on the election on Sunday. So I reckon uh, we have to look at on Sunday at um, who's gonna run against uh, Emmanuel Macron in the second round, but also the number of the participation. Marianne, really great to get that preview from you and we look forward to talking to you again in Paris as you're heading off there very soon. Good to talk, thanks so much. Thanks for having me.